Good morning once again, everyone, and welcome back. I'm Chad Holmes. It is our number two of the Chad Holmes Show on Bow Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230 online at bowfallsradio.com, mobile devices, and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. Again, you can also join us by taking a peek at us. You know, I got a face for radio. I think, Ian, I think, do you think you have a face for radio or are you a movie star? Your face for the uh, stage. <laughs> I think I'm a little bit of both, actually. There you go. So, but uh, you can join us on Facebook.com and X.com. Search out the Bow Falls Radio page. You can uh, see our video stream and then add comments as well. And, again, you can also give us a call at 715-382-9297. That's our text line as well, so you can give us a text as well, 715-382-9297. If there's anything you want to talk about, anything we're missing here uh, on this program, and uh, just want to have you be part of the show, also, make sure that you know that number because tomorrow, again, we will continue our weekly Friday giveaways. We started in mid-April. We will continue through the month of May, give you a chance to win an overnight package to the Chula Vista Resort in the Wisconsin Dells. Yep, an overnight stay uh, from Sunday through Thursday. Uh, also, four water park passes for you and the family, uh, plus a $25 gift certificate for one of the uh, restaurants at the Chula Vista as well. It's really a terrific package, and we do it on Fridays, not just once, but twice. We'll do it in the first hour tomorrow morning. We'll do it in the second hour tomorrow morning as well. So That's right. So make sure you tune in. You know, let you know what caller we're going to choose, and then we'll give you a chance to win both in the 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock hours tomorrow and every Friday through the rest of the month of May. Again, also, thanks to our guest in the first hour. Boy, we were, again, chock full of uh, terrific guests <laughs> as we were talking to a Pat Wrightlow to begin things, and then Brittany Merlot about the weather, and finally, North Star Knows with uh, John Garcia. And I really have to say that We've been doing this. I, I mean, I lose all sense of time these days, but it's been a few months now on Thursdays uh, at 834 that we have our North Star Nose feature with uh, North Star Restoration. And, and I've been finding out a lot because I truly am a layman when it comes to a lot of the issues and the uh, topics that we've been talking about with the folks at uh, North Star, including John Garcia, Jay Cricks, and uh, Clay Rice. And uh, it's really been a very interesting, really fun. And and again, when we wrapped up the hour, John was showing me pictures of the home that is going to be the, the North Star featured presentation at the Parade of Homes mm -hmm. coming up in early June. And I'm thinking, I'm never going to have anything like this. I'm just <laughs> renting my apartment and I'm never going to have anything like this. But it's still cool to think about, cool to dream. And it's really interesting to hear the whole process and hear the things that you really should be thinking about, uh, the things you should be doing when it comes to the entire process of building that dream home. And uh, really a lot that goes into it. And it sure helps to have uh, true professionals like those at North Star Restoration and North Star Builds uh, helping. And again, I want to remind folks that uh, coming up at the end of the show i'll be putting up on our uh, our podcast page both uh, at bowfallsradio.com at civicmedia.us and wherever you get your podcast uh, the podcast of this program and then we'll put a note on our facebook page that says hey go in if you missed the show go and listen to our north star restoration feature in the first hour of today's program but all you have to do then i'm going to add this as part of the facebook message as well but then all you have to do is in the responses just respond to that posting which i'll put up just after 10 o'clock, I want to go to the Parade of Homes. That's all you have to do. I want to go to the Parade of Homes, and then I will reach out to you, get your information, and then the North Star will hook you up with a pair of tickets to see the Parade of Homes. And it's always right. such a, a wonderful event here in North Central Wisconsin. It's coming uh, in early June, so still got a few weeks away from that. But uh, we have three 
passes, uh, three pairs of passes that North Star Restoration is going to uh, give to us and uh, to our listeners. So again, so once we get done with the show, and I'll try to remember at the very end of the show, after we quiz Ian at the very end to <laughs> remind you to go to Facebook.com and be able to uh, to uh, respond to our our message, and uh, we'll hook you up with those uh, passes for the Parade of Homes. Uh, before we go any further, uh, uh, coming up in this hour, we're going to talk a, a bit about, again, the Foundry on 3rd. And we here are right on North 3rd Street in downtown Wausau. We are going to see some building, hopefully, across the way over the next couple of years. But there was an update on the Foundry on 3rd and heard from Terrence Wall. He talked to the Wausau Pilot in Review. Going to talk about that uh, coming up at the bottom of the hour. Uh, coming up in just a few minutes at 920, we're going to talk about what's going on in sports. Christian Yelich returned for the Milwaukee Brewers yesterday. We have some high school uh, softball coming up later today. Going to talk about that. We'll have a sports update coming up at 920. And then at the very end of the hour, of course, we will have our daily history lesson. Talk about some famous events that occurred on this date in history. Talk about some uh, famous birthdays. And then we'll have our famous quiz. <laughs> As Ian Welsh at the very end of the show, we have a number for the day. And if you've missed it, this is one of the most exciting game shows that we ever have put together. Every day, Ian has the quiz. We give you three choices for our number for the day. And uh, based on, again, one out of three, he should get 33% just by the luck of the draw. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. he is, this week, 33%. He's got one right and two incorrect. So that means it's all riding on the final two days of the week. Have yes, to get is. one of the last two in order to have a good week. If you go 0 for 2, then you're 20%. That's not a good week. No, it's not. And if you get two out of two the rest of the week, then you're having a fantastic week. Yes. Because <laughs> I think your record is three. Is it three or have you had a four-win week? I think there was one time I had four. I think you may have. So I do think that maybe there's was... the one yeah. week, so it's very rare. Yeah, you've had some, uh, I think you had a zero week, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple of zero and, weeks. And then a couple of one weeks. But then recently it's been getting better. I have to say that you've been you and yeah, we, we can try to over well we can also we can hear your brain working on the radio you can as you, you can try to the gears moving yes yeah. you're trying to find that answer so again if you never leave the show early because that is always one of the most exciting aspects the very end of the show we have our number for the yeah. day and we give Ian the quiz so that <laughs> and these numbers of the day are also a very interesting I mean you learn something. <laughs> I knew, even if I don't get the answer right, you still learn <laughs> something incredibly interesting or also very weird. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm going to give you a preview. Today's number for the day involves Google. Ah, <laughs> Google. People Google things all the time, so we're gonna. Yep. It's gonna be something that involves Google. So just so you, you can get that mind to start to work a little bit uh, already. But uh, <laughs> but again, that's always fun to wrap things up, and always really appreciate you being with us on this program. Uh, coming up tomorrow on the show, uh, we're gonna be talking to the guys from the Wasa Business Show. They're gonna be coming in the Wasa Business Show every Saturday morning uh, from eight till nine. You're with us weekdays starting at 8 so you can do it on Saturdays as well yeah. the Wassa business show from 8 till 9 we'll talk to uh, the guys from the business show tomorrow at 8 35 and then at 9 20 we hope to have back after a couple of weeks away Paul Micklick to uh, talk about uh, Wisconsin sports so that'll be at 9 20 tomorrow on a Friday to get you ready for the weekend but uh hey we we touched on it briefly in the last hour uh, you're mm -hmm. continuing the uh the uh Anything goes rehearsal. Actually, real fast, yes, Ian. Is. I don't know if you saw this on Facebook. I bet you you did from the Wassa Community Theater site. Uh, I'm a, I'm a little jealous. A couple of uh, cast members from your show went to Wisconsin Rapids. It was on WFHR, our Civic Media sister station, talking about Anything Goes. We I was. I'm not aware of. That. Yeah, I mean, I this morning I, I'm looking on our, uh, I'm I'm looking on Facebook, just checking out my social media, forwarding you know what's going to be on this show, and I see uh, this picture. And uh, over the weekend, uh, last weekend, of course, I went down to the WBA Awards. I had a chance to talk to James from WFHR, and there I see James uh, in a picture, and a couple of the actors were on James's show down in Rapids. So what's going on here, Ian? We're, we have uh, 
I guess they're trying to get the word out. I more know, people. I know. It's all good. I'm not. I'm not mad. But that just they means we come on this show. We first. gotta get them set. No, and the thing is, it's still early. I, I, and I, let me know if you disagree with this. But I think that trying to have the uh, have the actors on the week of the when this week the show opens, so it's fresh in mind. If you're on now, you kind of no, forget. I agree with that. I think that so, but it's good that they're down there. Good to talk to James. James, a great guy, great interview. So, but we're gonna have folks from your show on as we get closer to it. Again, opening night is May the thirty first tonight. Mm -hmm. You're off book. Are you? Are you confident? Are you? Do you know everything? Are you ready to go off book tonight? Personally, I feel like I can definitely go off off book. I've been working on my lines. Working on the. Songs and all the words. I feel personally confident I can go hot book tonight. I'm not speaking for everybody else, but I can speak for myself. That I I do feel comfortable off book. Yes, that's a good thing because I've done a, a number of shows. Things you can do. Yeah, in the show. I did a number of shows, and I've always very good about learning my lines. I always because I always felt like I'm I'm useless until I'm off book. You know, it's like then you can really start to develop your character. But there was one show where. I never liked doing dialects, and we had to do a British oh, dialect, yeah. and I've never been one I enjoyed it, and and uh, it was like, and generally in my life, it was like I had things going on, and the night we went off book, I was not ready, and that was the most embarrassing aspect of my life. I mean, where you're constantly just you know being caught off, and it was embarrassing. Yeah. So that was the one time, and I made sure never to let that happen again. So <laughs> the first night off. A book is always the roughest, and it's always hard to when you first start off the rehearsal a process, and you're going through all your lines, and you have the book in your hands. Yeah, so like you're trying to do these motions, but you have yeah. the book in your hands. It's like it's a lot easier to be in a character once you're hot book, because then you don't have the book in your hands. You can like use your hands, move around, and just have fun with it. Well, yes. and again, I just always felt that completely useless until I got that book out of my hands. I mean, it just give, then you're really then the real process began yeah. for me. So uh, again, uh, hopefully it'll be a good first night off book, and hopefully Next all your castmates are also not yelling line every other second. <laughs> oh, I I guarantee you that some people probably will be, even though they're not supposed to. <laughs> it is almost nine nineteen. We're gonna have a sports update coming up next, and again after that we'll talk about the Foundry on third. Uh, I'm Chad Holmes. He's Ian Welsh. It is the Thursday edition. Chad Holmes Show. Both Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30. Round two this week as the Marathon High School softball team plays host to Newman Catholic in a Marowood Conference South Division matchup. Hear all the exciting action live on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30. Online at bullfallsradio.com. Mobile devices and Alexa by searching WXCO. And on the Civic Media app, starting with the pregame show at 4.35 and the first pitch at 4.45. Marathon High School Softball on Bull Falls Radio is brought to you by County Materials, Marathon Industrial Finishing, Underwood Construction, The Dirks Group, Brickners of Little Chicago, The People State Bank, Four Season Screen Printing, Marathon Family Dentistry, Twin Forest Products, the Marathon Athletic Club, Marathon Chiefs, Marathon City Sports Center, and Marathon Park City. It's Marathon versus Newman Catholic and High School Softball. Thursday, starting with the pregame show at 435 on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230, BullFallsRadio.com. Mobile devices and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app.
Chad Holmes Show on Bow Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230, bowfallsradio.com, mobile devices, and Alexa by searching WXCO, and on the Civic Media app. Just heard a promo, high school softball coming up later today, the New Catholic Cardinals and the Marathon Red Raiders. Marathon defeated the Cards back on Monday in a game that we had here on Bow Falls Radio. Cards will try to turn the tables today in Marathon. I'll be on the air from Marathon starting with the pregame show at 435 and the first pitch at 445. Again, live here on Bow Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Online at radio.com Mobile devices and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. Well, yesterday, the Brewers fell to the Kansas City Royals 6-4. to four. That was the bad news. The good news was the return of Christian Yelich. Yelich, who got off to a red-hot start uh, in early April, has been out for nearly a month with a back injury, but he returned yesterday, but uh, going to need a little time to get back into the groove. He was 0 for 5 with a strikeout yesterday. Uh, the Brewers did get a home run from Gary Sanchez. He hit his fifth home run of the season uh, for Milwaukee, but uh, it was not enough. The Royals take two out of three in the series, but the Brewers are still tied for first place in the National League Central. The Cubs were also losers yesterday. The Cubs fell to the San Diego Padres. So the Brewers, uh, despite some struggles recently, they have not been playing as quite as well in the last week or so, but Chicago has not been able to take full advantage. So the Brewers will try to get back on the winning track tonight. They will take on the St. Louis Cardinals at American Family Field, the start of a four-game week weekend series. Uh, Tobias Myers will be on the hill for Milwaukee. Lance Lynn will start for St. Louis. First pitch uh, set for 640 tonight in Milwaukee. Uh, high school sports yesterday. Not a lot. Usually on Wednesdays, very few, but there was some makeup games because of the rain on Tuesday. And Mosinee continues to play very impressive baseball. The Mosinee Indians, I think they're still the top-ranked team in Division II in the state. Uh, really, they have been dominant so far. Mosinee defeating Northern Pines yesterday by a score of 13-0 in the Great Northern Conference. Also in the GNC, Medford beat Lakeland 6-1. to There was one softball game from the area in the Wisconsin Valley Conference. Stevens Point defeated Marshfield by a score of 4 to nothing. Looking at the schedule today, again, lots of activity involving high school sports down to the final week or so, last week or two here of the regular season uh, in Wisconsin Valley Conference softball today. There are three games. Uh, D.C. Everest uh, is at Merrill, taking on the Blue Jays. Stevens Point is at Wisconsin Rapids, and Wassa East traveling to Marshfield. Uh, Wassa West is off today. The Warriors will be back in action in softball tomorrow night, playing host to Wassa East. 6.30 first pitch, 6.20 airtime tomorrow night. West and East in softball here on Bow Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30. Uh, also in uh, high school softball in the Merrowood Conference South, I mentioned the fact that the uh, Newman Cardinals are at Marathon today. Again, 435 pregame show right here on Bow Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Uh, also in the uh, Merrowood South in high school softball today. It is Assumption at Stratford in a significant game. Stratford knocked off Assumption on Monday in a big win that uh, – Really, again, puts the uh, conference uh, race in doubt. And Auburndale is at Edgar. Looking at uh, that very interesting Merrowood Conference South when it comes to softball, you got Assumption at 7-2, and two, Auburndale 6-2, and two, Stratford 5-4, and four, Edgar 4-4, four and four, Marathon 3-6, and six, and Newman Catholic 1-8. and eight. Uh, High school baseball coming up uh, today, Wisconsin Valley Conference. Valley right now is a one-team race at the top. Stevens Point uh, leading the way at 7-0. Second-place tie between Wisconsin Rapids and Wausau East at 4-3. Everest is 3-3, Marshfield 3-4, West and Merrill 2-6. And And today, Wausau West is at Merrill in a WVC matchup. Uh, The Warriors and the Blue Jays, Cannot be heard today here on WXEO because of our coverage of high school softball with Newman at Marathon. But if you are interested in tuning in to Wausau West at Merrill in high school baseball, our friends over at uh, WJMT Radio out of Merrill, 96.3 FM and 7.30 AM, they will have live coverage of that one. Also online at BlueJ96.3.com 
and mobile devices by searching WJMT. Again, just wanted to let you folks know that if you're a Wausau West baseball fan, you can catch the Warriors taking on Merrill. Actually, the game's not in Merrill today. It's going to be played in Wausau. Tomorrow, Wausau West is at Merrill in baseball because of the rain out on Tuesday. But Merrill at Wausau West in high school baseball today, again, can be heard on 96.3 FM and 7.30 AM out of Merrill. Also in the Valley, uh, Marshfield is at Stevens Point. Bash looking to stay perfect, both in terms of their Valley record and their overall record. And Wisconsin Rapids is at D.C. Everest. In the Merrillwood South in high school baseball, uh, the Stratford Tigers hosting Assumption. It is Auburndale at Edgar as well. And in fact, uh, Auburndale and Edgar scheduled for a doubleheader today because of the rain out on Tuesday. So, again, uh, lots of great uh, high school sports activities going on. We're down to the uh, very end, just uh, towards the end of the regular season. In fact, some of the playoff uh, brackets for high school softball have already been announced. They'll continue their seeding meetings for the rest of the week through the weekend. And then the seeding meetings for high school baseball coming up next week. And, of course, we are your home for Marathon Wausau West and Newman Catholic Sports. Very proud, as I often say, to be the only Wausau radio station that still brings you live play-by-play of high school sports here on Bow Falls Radio, 98, 9, and 1230. The Foundry on 3rd. It has been quite the soap opera. We've got an update on that. We're going to talk about it uh, just a bit uh, coming up next. Right after an information update, the time is 928 53 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. I'm Chad Holmes, Chad Holmes Show, Bow Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Changes in the WIAA office, plus a record-setting mark in track and field. I'm Travis Wilson, and this is a Wisports.net Minute, brought to you by Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. More high school sports news after this. Athletes aren't born. Their success is built through hard work, dedication, and a love for chocolate milk. Chocolate milk is the low-fat, protein-packed recovery drink of choice that elite athletes around the world turn to after their toughest workouts. Looking for a competitive edge? Replenish, rehydrate, and recover with chocolate milk. Brought to you by Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin and local promotion groups. It was announced this week that WIAA Assistant Director Kate Peterson-Abiad has resigned from the association effective May 24th as she'll pursue other career opportunities. Peterson-Abiad spent more than 27 years as a college basketball coach before serving the WIAA for six years where she oversaw the sports of basketball, tennis, and lacrosse as well as official licensing. The vacant position has already been posted. We've mentioned Hortonville senior Ben Smith several times this spring and do so again this week. At the FBA quad on Monday night, Smith recorded a state record shot put of 75 feet 1 inch, which is also the best in the entire country this season. The Oregon recruit is a two-time defending state champion in the event. There are new coaches polls out this week for spring sports. No changes in the number one positions for baseball, where Sun Prairie East, Pewaukee, Lake Country Lutheran, and Johnson Creek are the top teams. The number one teams remain the same in girls soccer this week as well, with Arrowhead, Whitefish Bay, Plymouth, and Cedar Grove, Belgium atop their respective divisions. In the latest Wisconsin Fast Pitch Softball Coaches Association rankings, there's one change at the top. In Division 5, Pacelli edges ahead of Oakfield to grab the number one position. The other top teams this week are Calcona, Mosinee, Broadhead, and Grantsburg. This has been a Wisports.net Minute. Check us out online at Wisports.net. Chad Home Show on Bow Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Online at bowfallsradio.com. 
mobile devices and Alexa by searching WXEO and on the Civic Media app. Well, we are right here downtown Wausau. Great to be downtown at the corner of Washington Street and North 3rd Street. And we see where some building is supposed to be done. <laughs> uh, it's good. There's still a lot of open space, mm-hmm. and uh, we are waiting to see some of the vision that uh, people have for the uh, area that used to be the Wassa Center Mall. Well, we're still waiting, but we got a little bit more information this week. Um, there's a headline in the wassapilotandreview.com, and there's a headline that says, I think it's, it, it, it's accurate, but it could have had a little bit more to it. It said, Foundry on 3rd Developer says downtown Wassa Project is on track. And Terrence Wall did say that. You could have added the one more line, but others are not so sure. <laughs> and I think, uh, again, we're, we're still waiting, and uh, we are coming up again on another deadline for the, the groundbreaking. And the uh, developer, T. Wall, says that the groundbreaking will happen May 30th at the site of the former Wassa Center Mall. Uh, Terrence Wall. And I've said a few things about Terrence Wall. I'm not a big fan of Terrence Wall, but uh, he's the guy behind the Middleton-based T-Wall Enterprises told the Wassa Pilot and Review. And again, you can get the entirety of this story by going to wassapilotandreview.com. T-Wall, Terrence Wall, said that loans have been secured and several will close after the property changes hands. Then he says after the groundbreaking, the project will be on pause until the city finishes its environmental cleanup on the property, which Wausau is obliged to complete. And again, this is such a, and I got to tell you, I have great respect for anybody that's involved in government at any level, because you have to do your homework. You have to go through a lot of different information. And this is one of those areas where, boy, I, I can only imagine how much study has to go into it, how much preparation has to go into it. Because, again, this is layered. T-Wall Enterprises is is the developer for the project. It was chosen by property owner Wassa Opportunity Zone Incorporated, which seeks to reinvigorate the city's downtown with a series of developments, including the apartment complex. And then city officials in 2023 hired a contractor to excavate the soils, but Wausau Opportunity Zone, under Chuck Godorzi's direction, rejected site access, leaving the contaminated soil in place. There was a, an amended agreement last year. As t had a deadline, and then they did not make it. So the amended, the amended agreement, the current agreement, T-Wall has until June the 1st to break ground on the project. With that deadline fast approaching, some of the Wausau Alder people on the Economic Development Committee this week, they had a meeting. They said they want a guarantee that the funding is in place. And Wall, in that phone call with WausauPilotsAndReview.com, said the project is on track. (laughs) That can mean so many different things. And again, I hope that it truly is on track. I really do. But I don't trust this guy as far as I can throw a dime. Uh, the foundry on third is estimated to cost about $45 million, roughly, uh, relies roughly on $10.8 million in taxpayer subsidies. And under the current agreement, the developer has until November the 1st of 2025 to complete the project. According to the story on wassapilotandreview.com, District 3 Alder Terry Killian on Tuesday, specifically asked if the financing has been secured and was not satisfied with a reply from Godorzi that there's been a lot of progress on it. So, uh, Killian said, we as a city need to know that it is in place, and that I think is a, a very straightforward statement after all this time. When she asked if the information would be available before breaking ground for the redevelopment of former Wassa Center Mall property, Chuck Godorzi said, absolutely. So this has been a long process. <laughs> the Wassa City Council in October of 2019, so that's almost five years ago, 
approved a proposal by WOZ, Wausau Opportunity Zone, to purchase the mall with $1.6 million in taxpayer-funded incentives that included a $1 million forgivable loan and transfer of city-owned assets to the LLC for $1. And those assets include the former Sears building, which the city purchased in 2017 for roughly $650,000. That's, again, basically... $650,000 $650,000 giveaway. Vicki Tierney, who represents District 19, she just joined the board in the uh, recent elections, said she would hesitate to move forward on the project, only to later discover that the developer has hit financial snags. She proposed that T. Wall would need to verify financing before breaking ground. And Tierney, I thought, said something that is very wise. Tierney said, it's my feeling because of the delays that we've had with T-Wall that we must know that the financing is secured before groundbreaking. Amen. This goes back to uh, the idea of the public-private partnerships. And I've had grave concerns about the idea of public-private partnerships. I'm not saying that... that None. No, no, no. But I have I've found that maybe the percentage of risk involved has been leaning, and not just in this area, but I'm talking about just generally around the country, that there are basically a lot of folks in the private sector that would like to have guarantees of all the profits, but make sure that any losses are put on somebody else's plate, being the public, being the taxpayer. when you look at what's been spent in the area of the old Wassa Center Mall, the people that are spending all the money are the taxpayers of the city of Wassa. People like T. Wall, who, and T- Terrence Wall, in case you're not aware, is a far-right conservative Donald Trump acolyte who, you know, basically would preach the gospel of supply-side economics and and all the conservative touchstones, including tax cuts for the very wealthy. But at the same time, when it comes to actual, if you're talking about pure capitalism, then don't be looking for handouts from taxpayers. These folks are really good. I, I will put examples of professional sports owners right up there with it. These are people that are just gung ho on free market enterprise and and uh, again about having the the creep of socialism moving in but they're always there with their hand out for the uh, public subsidies public subsidies to the poor oh that never ever ever that is that is just wrong on every level that makes lazy people but they sure do love having their hands out to the public till when it comes to these so-called public-private partnerships. And again, the idea that all the profit goes to the the private and all the risk and all the loss goes to the public is wrong on every level. The foundry on 3rd would include 154 market-rate apartments and commercial space at the site of the former Wassa Center, Center Mall. Terrence Wall said REI Engineering is also involved in the project and some funding is coming from local lenders. Also, the uh, Wausau's Economic Development Development Manager, Randy Feivrick, Tuesday provided an update on the redevelopment project. Feivrick said that since it's an update, the staff cannot seek any actionable direction from the committee. However, he said he would talk to the developer and have them provide an update at a future meeting. Well, it's nice to ask them to provide an update. Giving them all this money, it'd be nice for them to be at every meeting, to be honest with you. The idea that they can't be at any of these meetings ever would be a red flag to me. Feivrick said in his update that T. Wall and WOZ will have a closing plan later this week. Again, why are we waiting until later this week? <laughs> the deadline for the groundbreaking is June the 1st after all that problem we had last year where there was moments where it looked like it was falling apart.
So Mayor Doug Denny, according to the pilot and review, did not respond to an email requesting comment and additional information. We had the mayor on last week, and again, he was not able to give specifics, but he sounded confident that this was going to move forward in a positive way for the city. I hope his trust in Terrence Wall and WOZ is warranted because I do think there is still a lot of concern. So, again, I go back to the very start. I said the, the headline, and again, check out wassapilotandreview.com. Check out this story. But the headline, Foundry on 3rd Developer says downtown Wassa Project is on track. Again, I would add one more line to that, but others are not so sure. It's going to be a story to keep a continuous eye on. But again, I think even beyond this specific story, I think people need to start really analyzing the 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 weight on one side or the other when it comes to these so-called public-private partnerships. Because, again, I just feel like at times the, the private folks are looking for guarantees that they will never have any worries. But, but boy, if it works out, they're going to get all the profits. If it's truly a, a private-public private, partnership both sides should have equal skin in the game and also equal opportunity at the back end as well the time is 9 48 it is the ninth day of may i was about to say the, first gonna say the ninth day of february that was to say the ninth day of march but it is actually the ninth day of may is i have no idea what day it is half the time time just flies but we're going to have our daily history lesson, and then we'll also have our daily quiz with Ian Welsh on the number of the day mm -hmm. as he tries to go two for four this week. That's coming up. I'm Chad Holmes, Chad Holmes Show, Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. On Friday night, it's a battle of crosstown rivals as the Wassa West softball team plays host to Wassa East. Hear all the exciting action live on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30. Online at bullfallsradio.com. Mobile devices and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. Starting with the pregame show at 6.20 and the first pitch at 6.30. Wassa West softball on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30 is brought to you by the Cloverville Credit Union, Red Robin Restaurant. Sun Printing, Graphic Packaging International, the Wassa West Athletic Department, Menke Automotive, Shine Chiropractic, and Picks and Pieces. It's Wassa West hosting Wassa East in Wisconsin Valley Conference Softball. Friday, starting with the pregame show at 620 and the first pitch at 630 on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Online at bullfallsradio.com. Mobile devices and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. And welcome back to Chad Home Show here on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30. BullFallsRadio.com, mobile devices, and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. It is the ninth day of May of 2024. It is day number 130 of 2024. There are 236 days remaining this year. And some famous events have occurred on this date in history. In 1868, the city of Reno, Nevada was founded. Also on this date, in 1955, Sam and Friends debuted on a single U.S. television channel, marking the first television appearance of both Jim Henson and what would become Kermit the Frog and the Muppets. On this date, in 1987, actors Tom Cruise and Mimi Rogers were married. On this date, in 1990, 
Irish singer Sinead O'Connor refused to appear on Saturday Night Live after chauvinist comedian Andrew Dice Clay was named as host. On this date in 2014, Vladimir Putin visited Crimea for the first time since annexing the region. And on this date in 2019, a new Australian $50 banknote misspelled responsibility as res- responsibility. It got misspelled <laughs> on, on 46 million notes. Oh, boy. Some famous people are celebrating their birthdays today. Actor Candace Bergen. Murphy Brown fame is 78 years old today. Billy Joel, the great singer, is 75 years old today. Actor John Corbett of the My Big Fat Greek Wedding movies. Uh, also was a star of Northern Exposure and also on Sex and the City. John Corbett is 63 years old today. Actor Rosario Dawson from The Mandalorian, also Sin City and Daredevil, is 45. Reality star Audrina Patridge is 39. And Noah Centineo, to all the boys I've loved before, is 28 years old today. And if you out there celebrating your birthday, happy birthday to you. From all of us at Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Some special events being acknowledged today. It is Hooray for Buttons Day. <laughs> Love those buttons. <laughs> it's Moscato Day. It is Make a Book Day. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> it is Lost Sock Memorial Day. <laughs> Remember all those lost socks in your life. I've had a couple of those. <laughs> I think we all have. It is Butterscotch Brownie Day, and this one is somewhat controversial. It is Tear the Tags Off the Mattress Day. I don't think you're supposed to do no, that. No, you're not, you? but this is that's why it's controversial. <laughs> I don't know how many people have ever been uh, arrested for tearing the tags off the mattress, though. Yeah. That's a, that'd be an interesting number for the day, but it's not our number for the day. But those are the special events being celebrated today. All right, it is time. It yes. is time for our number for the day. Ian Welsh is one for three, so that's exactly where he should be because you have three choices every day. You should get one out of three just being lucky based by based on the math. You get more than 33%, you're ahead of the curve. You get less than 33%, you're behind the curve. Mm-hmm. All right. I mentioned earlier that our number for the day is Google. involving Google. <laughs> I got two choices. I'm going to go with the second choice. Okay. I'll, say, I'll tell you the first choice. The first choice would be the monthly searches on Google for the phrase, how do I use Google? Huh. So <laughs> I'm not going to use that one. I will tell you that that number is 5,500. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> a lot of people lot of every <laughs> month go to, go to Google to say, how do I use Google? All right, but the number for the day is the Google's monthly searches for how to win the lottery. Monthly searches for how to win. <laughs> like there is an the answer to how to win the lottery other than buy all the tickets. But okay. Google, how many monthly searches for how to win the lottery? Is there around 100,000 searches for how to win the lottery every month? Hmm. Is there 500,000 searches every month for how to win the lottery? Is there roughly 1 million searches? Or how to win the lottery. 100,000, so, 500,000, yep. or 1 million monthly searches for monthly. how to win the lottery. So on just Google. a month. 100,000, 500,000, or 1 million, roughly, all those numbers. I'm taking a, a shot at this. I just like winning the lottery. I'm going to say B. I'm going to say 500,000 searches. I think you've been saying B most of the week. I think it's at least the third straight day you've had the middle one. My mom gave me some advice that if you don't know the answer, <laughs> always go for the middle one. So well, unfor- unfortunately, mom is not correct. The uh, correct oh. answer is A, 100,000 monthly searches oh, the least to how to win the lottery. So you're now one for four. A drat. And that means tomorrow it is all on the line. If yes, you it get is. it right tomorrow, you're ahead of the curve with 40% correct this week. If you get it wrong, you're below the line at 20%. So tomorrow's a big one. Hopefully I can make a comeback. Yes. <laughs> Later today, we have high school softball, Newman at Marathon, 
435 airtime here on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230, com, mobile devices and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. So hope you can join me then. Again, 435, Cardinals and the Red Raiders High School Softball. Ian, have yourself a great Thursday. Make sure you re- remember all those lines off book tonight. I will. I think you should. Happy Thursday, everybody. Stick around. Matt and Air on Air coming up after an information update. Thanks for joining us. Chad Holmes Show, Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. And also, go to Facebook and say, I want to go to the Parade of Homes. I'll be posting that in mere moments.